Hey guys, welcome back to LK Cubing right here. So, sorry for not uploading for like two weeks because I'm kind of busy. But today we're actually going to be talking about queuing burnouts and we're going to be talking about the causes and effects of it. So let's get right into the video. So firstly, let me explain what is a queuing burnout. So a queuing burnout refers to a time where you're suddenly not interested in cubing at all or don't want to touch any type of Rubik's Cube. If you've been cubing for like more than a year, then you've definitely tried or experienced it before. Alright, so I've came up with a couple of different theories of why this would happen. So firstly, a uh, possible reason is you might have found a new hobby. Like for example, gaming or sports or something like that. Which might interest you more and make you more attracted to it. And as a result, you'll become less and less interested in cubing. Another reason why, maybe because you're doing too much solos a day or you're spending too much time uh, cubing. So if you're doing like 500 solos per day, that's just ridiculous. Because if you're doing too much, too much solos per day, then you'll eventually get bored. Another major reason is that you're getting really bad times and that's just making you depressed and you just don't want to cube anymore. I myself have experienced it too. If I just get a really slow average, I just feel really bad. And that kind of makes me want to not continue solving. Now, another possible reason is you've been queuing for a long, long, long period of time. Like I say, more than 5 years or even 10 years. Like, generally people have a pretty short attention span. And so the longer you've been queuing, the easier it would be to lose interest in it. Now let's talk about the effects of queuing burnouts. So, not severe ones can last for a month or so, but it can last for a couple of years at a time. So I myself have actually experienced it before. So I actually started cubing in 2016 and I cubed for about a year or so to 2017 and then I just quit and three years later which is about 2019, late 2019 to 2020 I started cubing again and I totally forgot how to solve the cube. Like I literally don't know, don't even know how to make one face. Now since I don't even remember the intuitive parts, how can I even remember the algorithms? So that, that's the main effect of queuing burnouts. If you don't queue for a long time, you'll just forget everything. You'll forget all the OLL algorithms, the PLL ones, they'll just vanish from muscle memory. After a certain period of time. Also obviously you'll get slower and that's a really big problem because you'll reset a lot of progress you've made before. Now since there's so many detrimental impacts on you, then you'll definitely want to avoid having a cubing burnout. So there's a couple of ways you can avoid it, and I'll tell you how. So firstly, you can start a YouTube channel. So a cool thing about YouTube is, you all can always feel that you're responsible for making videos for your viewers. Like for example, I have a viewer base of about 150 people, so you'll kind of feel like Oh, I haven't uploaded for a long time. I should definitely upload. So if you're not interested in cubing, you might be just cubing solely because you want to make cubing videos for your viewers. So I don't know if you know what I mean, but that's something that you can that can keep you cube for a little bit when you're extremely disinterested in cubing. A second way to kind of avoid it is just leave a little bit of time to cube every day. Maybe just do about a 12 solve average or something like that, that'll be great. Just make sure you don't forget your algorithms. Just just don't keep too much a day. Thirdly, do many many different events, blindfolded, clock or even some of the not popular events or non WCA events, you can do them too. The more events you invest time on, the less likely you're gonna quit cubing. At last, if you're having a bad day and you're getting a bad average, then I would recommend you to practice your look ahead and do slow solves. If you do slow solves, then it will improve your fast solve because you can practice your look ahead ability and other skills as well. 
So that's the end of this video. I'm sorry I can't get any real footage out. It's just me in the background solving, which is a bit boring. I'm sorry, but I don't really have any place to record right now. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.